I talk a whole heck of a lot about X-Men comics here on the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, but turns out there are comics not even about mutants. That's what I'll be highlighting today, rounding out the best of 2020. In this video, I'll share my 10 favorite comics of 2020, but I want you to know I liked a whole lot more comics than just these 10 this year. I have links to the complete Comic Book Herald year on best of for all comics, Marvel and DC in the show notes. As usual, it's worth a reminder that I'm only one stunning package of beefcake and have not read every good comic. But I read a lot of them and have picked all my favorites here for you. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel or Crack and Krakoa, the X-Men series, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. This year, in 2020, I was able to get up over 10,000 subscribers. Thank you to all of you who helped me get there. I'm looking to grow even, even more in 2020. But first, of course, we got to kick off this best comics of 2020 pick. Today, I'll be working through my top 10. This should be a spoiler free review, I want to point out, of these 10 picks in the comics. And again, if you miss one or, or forget what one was, I have links to everything over on comicbookherald.com where you can find the complete list. All right, so with that said, let's get into the best comics of 2020. Pick number 10. The X-Men. <laughs> no surprises here. While I was taken with Marauders as my personal favorite Dawn of X launch, throughout 2020, Jonathan Hickman, Lionel Francis Hugh, R.B. Silva, and Mama Nasrar, among others, have solidified the ongoing X-Men as the most essential book in the X-Line and a serious contender for best Marvel comic. Whether it's The Crucible, The Brood, or any time The Quiet Council gets together, I'm all in on the Krakoa era of X-Men. That has not changed, as the Kraken Krakoa faithful may well be aware. Now, Obviously, if you're into X-Men, I highly recommend subscribing here to the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, where I do reviews of every single X-Men comic as they come out, as well as Weekend Cracking Krakoas, where I usually explore some bigger themes, ideas, or, or recent events that might be coming at the time of release here. This will likely be my last video for 2020, so the next video that I will likely have as a weekend uh, crack and Krakoa will be a 2020 fast track. So if you miss things or just want to kind of re-examine like what actually happened this past year in X-Men comics, I'm going to be hitting my picks for the 11 major happenings in X-Men from things like Ten of Swords to what I mentioned there with the Crucible, the Brood, and some others to kind of talk about what that means for where X-Men comics are going. So again, subscribe to the channel here if you want to hear all about that. In the meantime, let's continue with some favorites. Number nine, Pulp. The relaunched Criminal was among my absolute favorite comics of 2019, and Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips show no signs of slowing with Pulp, a standalone graphic novel that takes the comics about comics candy of Bad Weekend, another, uh, it was a part of Criminal, and then they pulled it out into a standalone graphic novel itself, and it's excellent, and it packages that with Honest to God Cowboys. It's kind of amazing that this far into a creative collaboration that will go down as one of the standouts in the medium, I mean, Brubaker and Phillips are an institution. They are likely releasing their tidiest Hook Someone on Comics book so far in 2020 this year. I mean, Pulp is just so easy to hand to somebody and say, hey, want to check out comics? Check out Pulp. It's nearly perfect. Brubaker and Phillips also just released Volume 1 of Reckless, with Volume 2 set for release in April 2021. More or less assuring, we'll be seeing the duo in their rightful spot on Guram Besov next year as well. Number 8 on my list is Kent State 4 Dead in Ohio. This is Durf Backdurp's deep dive into 1970s Kent State massacre of college students by the United States National Guard. It's a touching, harrowing, and 50 years after the incident, ooh, maybe harrowing? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, incident tragically, you know, it's tragically relevant. Seriously, like this thing is, is so relevant to where we are in 2020, shockingly so. This was released 50 years after the actual event, you know, intentionally not like to, you know, it wasn't released, it wasn't drawn and, and created by Bacter after all of the events of 2020 and the protests and all the things that have been happening throughout this country in America, you know, with good reason. Um, it was just for the 50th anniversary, but all those things remain so relevant, and that's what makes the book so kind of tragic. The events at Kent State, I mean, they're essential history and shockingly full of dramatic suspense, despite the known outcome. So, like, I knew the outcome, you know, and if you think you know the story, I still recommend Durf Backdurf's investigation and portrayal. And if you don't know the story, like, at all, prepare to mutter, like, no way for 250 very tight black and white pages. Number seven on my list, a totally different bent. This is old head Kyle Stark's mashup of a former pro basketball tough guy. He once finished seventh in the NBA in steals 
and a vampire hunting legacy. It's without question the hardest I've laughed at a comic book in 2020. I'm not like all in on the Kyle Starks train necessarily. I really like a lot of his work. I liked his writing with an Erica Henderson drawn assassination especially. Um, but 2020, all his stuff was really hitting. He has a great sense of humor. He's a huge basketball fan, which was immensely appealing to me. Uh, when I did an interview with him for the Cree Annotator series I do on Comic Book Herald, we mostly just talked about NBA and basketball, which was pretty fun, I gotta say. And you'd also do well to check out Karate Prom, which you can get for pay what you want on Kyle Stark's website. It's another, again, like it's potentially free or, you know, you donate some money to a creator doing hard work and of course supporting them. Um, but another very funny, really excellent work. So if you're unfamiliar with Kyle Starks and his sense of humor, definitely check out Old Head and, uh, and Karate Prom. And then I would also probably send you to like he did his works like Rock Candy Mountain. Um, what's the big one? Sex Castle is probably his biggest one. If you're a big 80s action movie buff, you'll probably find a lot to, to grab onto with great, great comedy and action. Insect Castle. So that brings us to number six on the list, which is Bitter Root. David F. Walker, Chuck Brown, and Sanford Green have crafted a special, special world with Bitter Root. So it makes sense that after one story arc, the series would be generating headlines like Ryan Coogler to produce adaptation of Bitter Root for Legendary, which will be amazing. Hate is a monster, and the Sangare family are Hate's hunters. This series was as good as it's ever been in 2020, and the timeliness is rarely matched with all the racial tension in America. I can't wait for the return in 2021. I think that's Bitterroot's biggest downfall this year is simply that there was not enough of it. But I do actually like that this creative team takes its time to kind of release these stories in chunks and get things right. There's a good reason Bitterroot won an Eisner for Best Ongoing Series this year for the 2019-2020 the Eisners. And I'm looking forward to it coming back for more again in 2021. Number five in my list, back to the X-Men world, Hellions. As we all predicted, an X-Men rendition of DC's Suicide Squad starring Nanny, Orphan Maker, Wild Child, Havoc, Psylocke, John Grey Crow, Empath, and Mr. Sinister is the standout star of the X-Men's Dawn of X. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one could have predicted that. It's bonkers. Despite the oddball lineup, or perhaps because of it, Zeb Wells, Steven Segovia, Carmen Carnero, and team have built the funniest superhero comic in publication, and what has become my surprise favorite book in the entire beloved X-Men lineup. No ongoing superhero story makes me laugh out loud hard or as often as Hellions, and the harder I think about it, the more challenging I find it to think of an ongoing that really ever has. Like, I don't know that I've read a supers book quite this funny before. I'd actually be here curious to hear in the comments if you have picks for, like, all-time favorite comedy superhero books. I don't know. I think of, like, Justice League International from um, DeMatties and Giffen, you know, potentially. McGuire uh, is, is up there. Maybe Superior Foes of Spider-Man. But definitely let me, know, let me know what you think in the comments for, like, best, funniest superhero comic prior to Hellions. Number four on my list, Chasing the Bird. Jave Chisholm's graphic novel about the life of jazz legend Charlie Parker is one of the best dramatic biographies I've ever read in comics, at once celebrating Parker's legacy and influence while wrestling with the musician's demons. The work is broken up according to different POV characters such as Dizzy Gillespie or John Coltrane, keeping the narrative balanced, fresh, and stylistically engaging as Chisholm shifts in and out of genres. The story itself is more than worth the asking price, but it's Chisholm's inventive artistic approach to conveying music and emotion on the page that makes this an immediate, immediate standout. This was definitely or probably my favorite surprise of the year. This is from a publisher I was unfamiliar with, Z2. Jave Chisholm was a creator I was unfamiliar with prior to this. He is uh, an amazing comics creator and also like a musician. I think he has a doctorate in jazz, essentially. So he like is the perfect, perfect fit for a creator for this graphic novel. Seriously, even if you wouldn't think like, oh, jazz, not for me or not my cup of tea or whatever, this is still a fascinating book just about a, a historical figure that I didn't know about and then just seeing the way that biography is like brought to life on the page it's a really special work Number three on the list is A Map to the Sun. This stunning graphic novel from writer-illustrator Sloan Leong is one of the most gorgeous books of the year, with eye-popping inventive coloring that makes the trip through the coming-of-age story feel like a night outside with the full spectrum of a sunset. Ostensibly, A Map to the Sun is a sports story and another entry in the shockingly great year for basketball comics, but really it's a heartfelt coming-of-age story about five young girls and their friendship. You know, I did a lot of Creannotator's interviews this year with the first 
first time I did this for Comic Book Herald, a series where I interviewed, I think I got up to 28 creators that are interviewed basically from April through the end of the year, and Sloan Leong was one of them. And I was, there were times when I set up these interviews having checked out a work where I'm not like, I haven't finished the work necessarily, and I'm not fully, you know, committed to being like, oh, I love this. I was so delighted that a map to the sun was as good as it is because it allows me to engage super passionately and just as a fan during those interviews, which is definitely makes the work much, much easier. A map to the sun, you know, much like chasing the bird, it was a glorious surprise to me in that regard in that I loved it as much as I did, and it's highly recommended. Number two, Ice Cream Man. I don't know why I resisted this for so long, but it's time to admit that Ice Cream Man is my favorite monthly comic book. It's always the book I'm most eager to read and most impressed by with each new issue. W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo are doing more inventive comics works than anything else I'm reading, and literally every single issue, whether it's a palindrome, a dark children's book parody, an instruction manual, the most recent issue coming out is an advent calendar, it instantly becomes a contender for issue of the year. Beyond even the brilliance and imagination of the form, though, and there's a lot of formalism to this, the heart of this book and the horror stories it tells have more emotional weight than should be possible in a 20-plus page comic increment. Mix in 2020's Quarantine Comics, one of the true lifeboats during the early U.S. pandemic shutdowns, where Prince Morazzo and the, the Ice Cream Man team got together and just released these little, like, six-page shorts. All the, the proceeds, you know, went to various charities. They got some cool creators in on it to do, like, little short stories as well, like Al Ewing and Chris Cantwell. Um, it's just an endlessly fruitful realm of vision. Don't let the bed bugs bite, and remember, everything is one thing. Number one on my list, though, it is a combo platter of the Gene Lu and Yang special, Superman Smashes the Clan, and Dragon Hoops. It's hard to quite encapsulate the year Gene Lu and Yang had. I have two of his works on this Best New comic section, and yet another single issue in my picks for favorite single issues of the year, and that was Terrific's number 25, kind of a choose-your-own-adventure issue that he wrote with artist, amazing artist, Dan Mora. With Superman Smashes the Clan, which finished, it started technically in 2019 and finished up early 2020, Yang and Guri Hiro take inspiration from the incredible 1940s radio show Superman vs. the Clan of the Fiery Cross and deliver a modern yet timeless tale of social injustice and doing what's right in the face of great hate. From the gorgeous all-ages designs of Guri Hiro to the essays about America, racism, and life as an Asian American by Yang at the end of each issue, this is an essential comics work. It's as essential a comics work, frankly, as you will find. Elsewhere, really all I needed to hear was Gene Liu and Yang and Basketball Comic before trying to jam my credit card into the closest apparatus I could find. This was published by First Second, Dragon Hoops. It's an autobiographical account of Yang's time teaching at a California high school on the verge of their first state championship. Essentially, Yang is not a sports fan, meaning that even though I am, I'm a big basketball fan, his focus is on the characters, their struggles, crafting new stories, the way legacies can influence our present, basically just life in general. Every moment spent reading Dragon Hoops is pure joy, making it my single favorite comic of 2020. So that does it for me, but I want to hear from you. What are your favorite comic books of the year? Definitely let me know in the comments here. I would absolutely love to hear from you regarding your favorites of the year, any picks that I may have missed. And again, check out the links in the show notes here for the full list to everything with links to all these books on comicbookherald.com. In the meantime, again, thank you to everybody who has supported the Comic Book Herald channel this year, the Comic Book Herald website, everything that everyone has done. Again, getting me up over 10,000 subscribers this year. I started like just over 1,000, so that was great growth for me. Um, it's a new thing that I've kind of been trying this year, and people seem to dig it, so I've been super happy with that. So thank you for supporting the site this year. Especially thank you to those on patreon.com slash comicbookherald who have supported me via Patreon support. Extremely generous, extremely generous. Thank you to all of you for your support. Again, I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast for more from me in 2021. We got some big, really cool, exciting things planned. I think in January, it's going to be Kraken Krakoa number 150 time. So we'll be looking to do another live episode, a live stream here on YouTube with uh, hopefully a very special guest. So we'll see what I can corral together there. But again, thanks everybody for listening. And as always, enjoy the comics.